Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. It seems like only a week ago that I was reviewing the Mecha Quartz powered Retro Chronograph, the Nizumi Voiture, because it was only a week ago. Now, a number of you left me the same comment a number of times on that video, and that was, I like it, but I would pay more for an automatic chronograph rather than a Mecha Quartz. That got me thinking, there just aren't that many affordable automatic chronograph movements on the market due to the inherent complexity of the chrono. I can only think of four, please if I've missed any, leave me a comment, I would love to pursue this little thread. The four I can think of are two Swiss ones, the legendary Valju 7750 and the ETA 2894, which is a kind of more compact, slightly more modern one. If you can find either of those in a watch for less than a thousand US, I think you're doing pretty well. One Japanese contender, the Seiko NE88. If you can find one of those at all, I think you're doing very well. They are like hen's teeth. There is, however, a fourth option. The one in the back of the Vintro Le Mans 1952 that I've got on my wrist today, and that is the Seagull ST1940. Now, two things before we go on. This watch was sent to me for free by Vintro. I don't have to send it back. The second thing is it was sent to me last year. Sorry Vintro, I took my sweet time reviewing this one. But was it worth the wait then? Is this the holy grail, that affordable retro automatic chronograph that fits in between the Swiss ones and the Mecha Quartz? Or maybe not. Let's flip the camera and find out. It's a big box. While I'm unpacking the box, why don't I tell you the origins of the name, the Vintro Le Mans 1952. Le Mans obviously refers to the Le Mans 24 hour race that takes place in France each year. I'm a big petrol head if you hadn't worked that out, so any excuse to show you some old Pathé newsreel footage of the 1952 race. Ah, if you breathe in, you can almost smell the petrol and the burning flesh. The 1950s were absolutely deadly for motorsport, for drivers and for spectators alike. Fortunately, the 1952 race passed off with relatively little incident and it was won by the German Mercedes team. A couple of slightly portly German chaps, appropriately enough, called Fritz and Hermann, won in the stunning Mercedes W194. That was the race version of the Gullwing Mercedes 300 SL, a car that Mercedes are still homaging to this day with their McMurk SLRs and various others. Now Vintro are a German brand making a 1950 style racing chronograph so I think that is highly appropriate that they choose to tie in between that particular race and this watch. Quite often I'm critical of new brands over branding, over associating their watches with places or times but I think this one works well. Now, 500 US dollars approximately for the automatic version. The question you have to ask yourself today though is, do you really need an automatic chronograph or are there other possibilities? For your $500, you get a bracelet, you get a NATO strap, and you get the leather strap. I will show you on all three, but I'm gonna concentrate on the leather strap because I think that's the best of the three. But overall, I'm afraid I'm struggling to recommend the Vintro Le Mans. I think it's got some nice touches, but in some ways it is hampered by that very automatic chronograph movement that we're talking about. So obviously going for the 1950s look, and I think they've done very, very well with that. It is a beautiful dial layout, tachymeter on the outer, telemeter on the inner rim there, but with modern sizing. 40 millimeters in diameter, 48 mil lug to lug, 20 mil lug width, but 16 mil thick. Look at that thing, I mean that is, Dive watch thick, it is like chunky dive watch thick, and that is one of the biggest problems I have with this watch. The thickness though is a necessity of the movement. So again, you gotta ask yourself, do you really need an auto? Now this one on the supplied leather strap, which I think is the best of the options, weighs in at 90 grams. So a decent size and weight to it, but just a bit too much heft. 316L stainless steel three piece case with a fixed high polished bezel and a display case back showing that Seagull ST1940 column wheel chronograph movement. Now there is a pleasing circularity, a kind of poetic circularity, the fact that this 1950s style chronograph has that movement in the back of it. 
Seagull it may be and made in China, but this is based on the Venus 175 movement that powered many Swiss made chronographs of the 1940s and 1950s. In the early 1960s, Venus sold the rights, they sold all the machining and the tools for these movements to the Chinese, who modified it a little bit for themselves and started producing their own watches, most notably the Seagull 1963. Their military chronograph, though obviously they didn't call it that at the time. So like I said, it is probably the most appropriate modern day movement that you could put in the back of a retro style chronograph. And let's face it, a column wheel chrono for $500 is really a pretty good deal. Once you get the macro lens onto the movement, you can see some machine marks. It's perhaps not the prettiest thing under a loop, but at a glance for an occasional gander, I think it's quite attractive with the blue screws, various colored cogs and wheels. It's a pretty looking thing to look at. And the movement doesn't do too badly for itself either when you strap it onto the old Weishi 1000. This should be noted though, it's just one watch in one position, but it's a healthy amplitude, minimal beat error, and a decent plus seven seconds variance per day. Please note though, this one does hand wind as well as wind by the rotor, but it does not hack. And it's a very pretty dial to look at. I've looked at a number of these 50s, 60s retro chronos now from Dan Henry from Comet, and now this one, and if they're done properly, then they're very attractive. Lots and lots to, to keep you entertained. We've got the tachymeter around the outside, telemeter scale and red on the inside. So a couple of different colors there as well. Now the hands, the chrono hand and the two sub register hands are blue. I'm not suggesting they're heat blued. I'm probably suggesting that they are painted blue, but nonetheless, it's a nice touch. One push of the chrono pusher at the top to start the, the chrono hand, 30 minute chrono timer. We've got a, a ticking second hand there at the second sub register at nine and no date. Most of the chronograph movements of the 1950s didn't feature dates. Again, that keeps the, keeps the dial nice and clean. Applied 12 and six Arabics and stick batons everywhere else. If you notice those sub registers slightly recessed with lots of concentric circles. Again, some nice little touches, as I said. Second push push of the top pusher to stop, one push of the bottom pusher to reset, and because it's a column wheel chrono, it's got a nice kind of snappy feel. You really know that you've pressed the pushers. But it is just too thick. That's it sitting on top of my seven inch wrist, and it really does sit on top. Look at that thing. Meaning that it sits a bit top heavy, it kind of bobbles around as well if you haven't got the strap done up tight. Now, there's a bracelet, obviously, I'll show you that in a minute or two. I don't think the bracelet does the watch any favours though, necessarily. This leather strap is quite good though, looks like it will patina well, looks like it'll kind of keep in with that vintage look of the watch. Looks good on wrist, case back doesn't stick out, but the whole watch sticks up. The handset, I think, is a good size, nicely in proportion to the dial. The whole watch is in proportion, apart from the thickness, and reasonable legibility, and I do like that champagne colour from the dial. Outside, it's a double-domed sapphire crystal, and there is some anti-reflective coating on the underside with a faint blue hue, actually meaning the watch is fairly legible in sunlight. On wrist, the vintage-style downward-sloping lugs help, but as you can see there, it's still very much sitting atop my wrist rather than being part of my wrist. And personally, I wouldn't be putting a blue NATO strap on a 1950s chronograph, but hey, nice of them to include one in the package nonetheless. All high polish to match the watch and Ventral branding on there, but it does mean it makes it even thicker and even more bobbly and top heavy. The bracelet is all right, solid end links, solid links with screws. I mean, the clasp unfortunately is a nasty press one, but it is high polished, super shiny throughout, as is the watch. I think that just means it's a bit too much, which is why my preference would be for the vintage style leather. So I think my moans and niggles have been fairly evident today. I think it is too shiny. I think it is far too thick. And the six, the Arabic at six is squint. Just above the made in Germany there, there is some irony. Obviously this is a Chinese made movement. So the made in Germany rules are not the same as the made in Switzerland rules. They're a little bit more relaxed, but that's not great. That would definitely bug me if I had paid for this one. So again, the question, do you need an automatic? Does it have to have that rotor? Does it have to have the extra thickness as a consequence? If the answer is no, then I think there are a number of viable alternatives. If you like the look of the Vintro, go for the Mecha Quartz. It's less than half the money and it's at least two mil slimmer. Or for even less money, about 170 US dollars, 
why not buy the OG, the Seagull 1963? This one also features the same Seagull ST19 movement, but a manually winding version, so it's much, much slimmer on wrist, and I think just as pretty. So sorry, Ventro, sorry that it took me so long to review your watch, and sorry that I cannot hand on heart recommend it. So there you have it, the Vintro Le Mans 1952. A nice watch, a looker, but I think a couple of compromises too many for me to urge you all to rush out and drop 500 plus US dollars on it. If you like the look, then by all means, pick up the Mega Quartz. It's slimmer and it's half the price. I really think there is an argument for having these retro chronos powered by those Seiko Mega Quartz movements. Or if you insist on a mechanical, go for the much cheaper, much, much cheaper 1963. This one's a bit too thick, it just doesn't really work. So be careful what you wish for. An affordable automatic chrono might not be all it's cracked up to be. Thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.